Hey guys, my name is Fletcher Nelson. I'm a third grade teacher in Minnesota and I recently posted on pretty much TikTok and Instagram about the secret stories. So if you are watching this, I'm assuming you are somebody who either purchased them and you're waiting for yours to come, or maybe yours already came and you're um, just looking for ideas on how to implement it. But basically I'm making this video because I had followed Katie, who is the creator of the secret stories on Instagram for like probably like two years. And I always loved what she posted and I thought it was intriguing. I just never thought it would apply to me as a third grade teacher. It just kind of seemed a little too primary, a little bit, I just, didn't seem like something I needed, but I still followed along. And then as the years went on, I kind of realized more and more, it seemed like maybe something that I could apply to my kids, especially for me, I was thinking for like their writing. Um, so I actually had messaged her and just kind of asked her, I'm like, hey, so I do some tutoring after school for kids who you know need a little extra help in reading. And I'm kind of thinking maybe for my whole class for you know reading and writing, like would this be, what would you recommend I get and whatever else. So after talking with her, I decided I wanted to get the full classroom kit. So I got the decorative pastels. So that's the posters behind me. And that kit obviously comes with this book as well. Um, so that's what I ended up buying. And I have had zero regrets. I'm going to, I'll be completely honest. I've only had it for like two weeks, but I still would recommend it to anybody because I'm, I'm obsessed. It's been amazing. Um, so I just wanted to kind of make this video. So if you're somebody who saw my that I made a TikTok that kind of got quite a few views, a couple hundred thousand. And I know that that drew some attention towards Katie and got some orders. And I also recommended people join the Facebook group because I had joined that and just got tons of ideas and questions I had were answered. Um, and now that I've been talking with Katie a little bit and kind of she's seen what I've done, she just asked if I would be willing to even just kind of explain to people what I did. Cause she said that seems to be one thing people are kind of worried about or not really worried, but have questions like, how do you start it with your class, especially in the middle of the year? And if you teach third grade, like how does it work with third grade? Since it's, it does kind of seem like it's something our students shouldn't need by third grade. Like we almost feel like they should already be reading to learn and not on that learning to read part, but that's not always the case. So I'm going to just kind of go over and show you how this works with my third grade classroom and how I just jumped into it. Cause I'm, that's just the kind of the type of person I am. I like to just start using something and figure it out as I go. Um, I don't really plan it out and then start going. So, um, so I'll share with you what I did because it's been working, I guess. Um, I will say that I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not saying I'm like a professional at this. I'm just saying I bought it. I love it. My kids have responded well to it. So I'm going to tell you what I did because maybe it'll just help ease any nerves you have about um, how to get started or how to set it up in your room, especially if you're somebody who already submitted an order and you're waiting for yours to come because that anticipation part, you know, that can get some people kind of um, stressed out a little bit. So here we go. I am just going to probably ramble. So I hope this makes sense to start with setting it up. I got mine, like I said, two weeks ago, um, just over two weeks ago. So mine came out on Monday and that Tuesday we had indoor recess. So I brought it to school Tuesday and during indoor recess, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to start hanging these up. So I chose this wall behind me, you can see, and I just started hanging them up and my kids were in here watching a movie and, um, they were instantly just curious so like what what are those for and i'm like it's a surprise i'll tell you about them tomorrow and in my head i'm like i can't even i don't know what they are yet i haven't even opened up the i haven't even opened up this book i don't know what the stories are yet i just know i'm going to use them and i'm going to hang them up so they were instantly just curious like they watched me and they're like oh oh i know i know those two letters what sound they make because with like the th you can see the tongue tongue sticking out and so they are just were already i already had their interest i already had them wanting to know more so I would definitely say just hang up your posters right away because your kids are going to see them and be like, wait, what, what are those for? And from what I learned in the Facebook groups, you want to hang them up all right away and not when, not like after you teach them, just because you might, I don't know, kids will reference them more and maybe they'll see some of the stories that they see up there in their books and sometimes you can help them out. I don't know. They had reasons and I just listened to them. So I did hang them all up before I taught any of them. And I'm glad I did because like I said, it just has them so curious and they've pointed out to some stories that are up there that we haven't talked about that they see in words and whatnot. So I just set them up that day and then I told them like tomorrow I'll tell you about them but for now it's a surprise. And the next day I kind of in your book which you'll see if you already have it but the red pages in here are the actual stories. So it has the story that goes with it and then there's any, if there's any exceptions it also has that. Um, and then the rest of the, the first part of the book is kind of teaching you about how to use them and why like the science behind it and then there's um also a bunch of musical brain teasers which i haven't checked out yet but sound awesome and then there's um 
like printables and then some cards in the back. But anyways, so the next day I just chose a couple of the stories that I looked at and I just told my kids like, I know you guys recognize some of those patterns up there and you guys knew that you knew TH made the th sound, but I'm like, but do you guys know why? And they're like, why they do? It's like, no, they just do. I'm like, exactly. So those posters back there, they're gonna help us remember why. And they're gonna help us for our reading. Cause if you come across these letter patterns in your words that you're trying to figure out, you can remember them. Or when you're spelling, if you're trying to sound out a word, sometimes we have these weird sounds and it'll help us remember which letter combinations make them. So I know you guys recognize some of them up there, but you guys don't know why they make them. So you need to learn the stories behind them. So I told them AU and the AW and that story and about how they have crushes on each other. So anytime they're like, that's perfect for third grade because they start talking about, you know, so-and-so like so-and-so. And I was just like, so they're just, you know, in line and they're just right next to each other every time they're just like, ah. So instantly they're looking at like around the room, they're seeing like, they're like, that's in the word awesome. That's in Dawson's name. Like they just started finding the patterns everywhere. And they probably knew that those letters made that sound anyways, you know, maybe not all of them, but it gave them a reason why. And now when they see them together, they instantly remember that, like in the word August, or it just, they just, they notice it everywhere. So that was one of the first ones I told them. And then one of the second stories I told them was about the sneaky Y. And with that story, it's sneaky Y um, wants to try to be like the vowels, but you know, and again, I just relate it to my students. I'm like, you guys, when, I, when we watch music, the, when you guys are in the back of the line, some of you guys try to be sneaky and like to try to talk and whatnot, right? Like, yeah. Like same with Y, when he's at the end of the word, he likes to either try to say the E or the I sound, um, the long vowel sound. But if he's at the front, it's too obvious. So that's in like ye yellow. He has to say his actual sound, otherwise people would catch him. And they're like, okay, we have a whatever. And then all of a sudden they're like, wait, because we have the word family up on our boards, like, or our wall, like, oh, family, that makes sense. He can be, say the E sound. I'm like, yep. And then one of my boys' names is Jay. So he's instantly like, wait, I have a Y at the end of my name. How come it says the A and not an E or an I? You said it only says E or I. So that led us into the next story with the A, Y, E, Y. I was like, well, there's a story for that. So let's learn that one. And then we talked about how those ones are too cool. So they just say A. So now they have it in stay, in Grayson, his is E, Y. So they just keep making these connections and it's just with things in our room. And then they've started finding it in their books and pointing them out to be like, hey, hey, we just talked about that story today. Or what happens is they'll come across words, they'll be like, hey, I see this word famous and I see O-U-S up there. And we haven't learned that story and I see an O-U-S in this word. Can you, can we learn that story? Can you tell it to us? And they've started finding them and just wanting to know. So it's like in third grade, it's not necessarily like, me needing to teach them the sounds because a lot of it they have. This part is just like for them to remember and it's gonna help, that's been helping them with their writing. And for my students who need, do need help with decoding words, it's helped them tremendously as well. And like I said, it's been two weeks. Um, so what I would say is like, don't feel like you have to have a plan going in of which ones you're gonna introduce. I just picked a couple that day to introduce and then they've come across ones that they have questions about. And I just tell them like, honestly guys, since I just got this and I'm new to it too, I'm just gonna read you the story. And I don't do anything special. I'm not a super like dramatic or like theatrical type. Like the one, I'm kind of a little sarcastic and I'm good at like relating it to them, like with the it being in line, but I don't do anything special. And they have become obsessed with the stories. Um, we started putting little sticky notes. Maybe you can see back there up in the corners on the ones that we've told just because I wanted to kind of remember which ones we had gone through. And every once in a while, if we have a few extra minutes, like, hey, can you tell us a story we haven't heard yet? And they want to know them. So again, it's just kind of in their control. They're honestly sometimes the ones choosing them. So that's kind of how it's been like whole group, either me just telling them some of them and then them finding examples or it's come across when they're trying to spell a word or read a word. Um, and a couple of times too, I've been reading with students and they come across a word and like, um, with, I posted this one on TikTok, this example, the word was chemical and they were sounded, sounding out with ch and it called chemical. Well, in the story, it talks about how it's, they seen the H always make the ch, 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 but sometimes they want to be the conductor of the train. So they make the k sound. So then after that, that student did it and then I had them I'm like do you want to teach that story to the rest, rest of the class since you learned it and yeah they love just like telling it and sharing it then and trust me they they remember them so it's nothing you need to like feel like you're you prep for because it's just a conversation you have but since it's that story and I know Katie has the science behind this but like, different parts of your brain fire and whatever else but I'll just tell you from me being a teacher and somebody who's not very planned out you don't plan 
you just tell them the story and they remember it and they apply it and they find examples and they connect it to their writing. I, I have students doing like the owl sound and maybe they don't use the right type of owl. Um, I'm trying to think of an example. Someone, oh, why, uh, what was the word? Cause they used O-U instead of O-W. I can't remember what the word they were trying to spell was, but you could tell because he had underlined that ow sound, like he remembered, and I never said, hey, underline the stories when you spell them or anything, but he did. And yeah, it wasn't the right type, but you can still tell that that, he, that was helping him sound out that word. And it made sense, like when I read it, I knew exactly what it said because it made sense. It was the right, like it should have been OU or what, it, he flipped them. But that's just a thing where once he sees the words more in writing, then he'll have that visual and he'll be like, ooh, that looks wrong and be able to flip it. But anyways, there's not, there's not a lot to it. So it's super easy to jump into. So what I would say, if you are somebody who'd ordered this, when you get it, hang up your posters. The next day, start by telling a couple stories and then see how your class responds. See if there's any they want to know. Um, some of mine like really wanted to know some of them, so I would tell them. And then just as they come up, or if you see an example, just be like, oh, 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 hey, this is one of our stories, guys. I see one of our stories in this board and I haven't taught you, I haven't told you guys that story yet. So I'm gonna tell it to you right now and explain to you why those two letters say that sound. Um, and they just, my class at least has just been super engaged in it. So like I said, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Um, this is what the stories look like inside the book. So like I said, it's super easy. You literally just read that story. It'll have word examples. It'll have what happens if there's exceptions. And um, on the posters too, it'll have um, like, kind of like thought bubbles. And that's like with the example I gave before. So it's almost always ch -ch -ch, but it has this because sometimes it wants to be the conductor. So k so they'll have that on there too if there's other sounds that it could be. So they kind of have like, this is what it is most of the time, but there's also second or third options as well. So anyways, this is how I have mine set up. And those are the ones we've gone over so far. Uh, we've actually gone over a couple. We haven't put sticky notes on, but um, we've just done a couple a day and it's been awesome. So I, I feel like I just rambled and I don't really actually remember what I said at all. So I hope this helped. I just... All I want you to know is if you bought these and you're waiting for them or if you're nervous about implementing them, don't be because it's not a program itself. It's, it's it, you're gonna find it just flows into your day so nice. Like you don't even think about it and it's just gonna pop up. And the more, like once you start using them, your kids are gonna hold you accountable for using because they're gonna find them themselves and wanna know the story. Like I said, my third, like I teach third grade and I did not expect them to respond to it this way. I really was hoping to use them for, for my, um, tutoring group and I thought for them for writing it like might be nice to refer to and I never thought it was going to have the impact that it did or yeah it, like it's just been amazing so um just jump into it you can just go in the order in the book I've read on that Facebook group and I'm going to link that Facebook group in the description I'm assuming you came from the group but if you didn't check it out and join it you can just go in the order of the stories in the book if you're really just looking for a starting point and like I said I just ch chose a couple to look at that I could remember and I just told them and then from there I let if my kids had questions about one or if we came up in our reading or if it was a word we were spelling or whatever else um, but yeah you can definitely just go in order too if you just want to introduce them that way there's not a right or a wrong way to do it um, you just gotta do what works for your kids and what works for you and you're gonna love it and it's gonna be super it's just gonna work it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. Your kids are gonna love it. They're gonna remember them, and it's gonna you're gonna see it helping their reading and their writing. So, I hope you enjoy them. If you have questions that I didn't answer, like I said, I'm not a professional. I don't know this at all. I've only used it for two weeks. I don't know what I'm doing, but I know I'm trying. Um, but ask me anyways, and I can either tell you what I do, or I can find somebody who has used it better. Um, or if you have any good ideas and you have been using it for a while, let me know below as well. So, thanks for watching. Leave those comments and uh, I hope your students love the secret stories.